Hey Danny here from Songwriters International. Now in today's video I'm going to share with you how you can take those same four chords that you probably find yourself playing on repeat for most of your songs. How you can take them, how you can play them up on the neck of your guitar to create a different type of sound which then hopefully will allow you to get more inspiration, get your melodies flowing differently and for you to create a different type of song at the end. I know myself included and a lot of songwriters that play on guitar is we find ourselves in the same cycle and we play the same chords on repeat which then leads us to write the same type of song at the end. So we're gonna share with you how to break that, how to break that mold of what you might be finding yourself in and how to be that little bit more creative. So without further ado let's jump on it. Now you've probably heard a lot of great songs follow the same four chords and that is so true. But what happens when you're constantly playing an E minor, a C, or a C at 9, a G, and a D? How do you actually go about writing a different type of song every single time when you're just constantly playing the same type of chords? Well, I'm going to share with you my first trick and the best way to go about creating variation in your chord progressions to allow you to feel a different type of inspiration. What if we just took these four chords and we put them into bar chords? Now you might be familiar or you might not be familiar with bar chords, but I particularly like bar chords. They just sound funkier, cooler, um, more energetic and all of those things and it's all about how you play them as well. Now we're just going to play these with a standard pick, we're not going to do any finger picking or anything of that nature. So if we take the standard four chords, okay, and we've, like I say, we've got the E minor, We've got the C at 9 or the C, we've got the G and we've got the D. So if we just play those round. And this is what you probably find yourself doing a lot of the time. Now those sound okay, but what if we just took the E minor and we placed it up here on the 7th fret. Right, we're playing the same chord, but we're just taking it up into a bar chord. And what if we took the C and we placed it on here on the eighth fret? So rather than playing over here in a C at nine or a C, and we just went here. Sounds completely different. Or if we just took the G and we placed it on the third fret, or if we took the D rather than playing it here, and we just played it here on the fifth or if we played it here on the 10th, right? So we can vary up the chord progression and see how much this is different, right? So we're going to play the same four chords, but now we're going to do bar chords, okay? So here we go. Right? It just creates a completely different energy. Right, and that's dependent on how you play them, of course. But even if you played with downstrokes, and hear the difference here. Sounds completely different. At least it does to me, and it gets my juices flowing differently. I feel more creative and I find myself breaking the cycle a little bit than just playing the same standard four chords. Now, also what you could do with these chords is you could play the D here on the fifth as opposed to on the tenth, or you, rather than barring the G, you could play it slightly open like this, okay? Or you could play the C open. So there's a few variants straight away on how you can do that. So let me give an example. So let's put those four chords together and let's see how different it would sound to how it would sound if they were just open chords. Right? Completely different energy than if we were playing. You can see just how the energy is completely different, which then allows us to think differently, feel more creative, and also that should impact what it is you come up with ideas. 
melodically, you know? You might get an idea completely different to if you were playing open chords. Cause I've been dead and dead, so tell me that you're not. I've been looking up, da ba da ba da ba da. So that is my first trick, and that's the easiest way just to take those open chords, play them as bar chords, and change how you're writing your songs that little bit. My second thing is to use a capo. If you don't have one of these, these are super inexpensive. They'll cost you about seven to eight dollars or about five to six British pound. So very, very useful and very, very inexpensive. Now, all you're doing here is basically placing it on a fret anywhere on your guitar, okay? So you're playing it up higher. So you can just take it, don't really put much thought into it, place it on a fret or a fret and take those same chord shapes. So take the E minor shape and the C and the G and the D. Now you're not playing an E minor here and you're not playing a C here, but you can take the shape and just play it in the same way you would if you didn't have the capo on here. And hear the difference that you get when you place the capo on. So let's play it without the capo. And let's play with a capo on the fourth fret. So you're still playing the E minor shape and the C at nine. Completely different, right? And just that small tweak into the way that you're approaching playing the guitar can instantly get you writing songs in a different style, okay? And that's without then starting to do finger picking and additional little extras to get you slightly more creative in different ways. So use a capo, go and play your chords, but play them in a bar chord sequence, okay? If you're struggling with bar chords, then just practice, just learn those four chords and I can guarantee straight away you will get a completely different sound and a completely different way of writing a song. My final tip here is if you're writing with guitar and then you're creating melody and lyrics from there, my extra little bonus tip for you is to use what we call a static melody. Okay, if you're, if you're really stuck and you are, I mean really stuck and you don't know where to go or what to do, just simply go to a static melody for your verse. Now what a static melody is, I'm gonna demonstrate it for you in a minute, but imagine you took a pen and you went onto a piece of paper and you just drew a straight line, okay? You just did a straight line. You're trying to create a melody that is very straight, that has very little movement, and that's what you're doing, okay? So to give an example of this, if I had the set of chords that I'm playing, okay, I'm just gonna play an E minor, a C, a D, and or a G and a D, okay? So something like this would be a static melody. I'm up all night thinking about you, thinking about us, and I, I've been thinking about what to say when I see you. Static melody. It's not really moving much. I'm not going, hey, tell me that you want me, bum, bum, bah. We're not doing any of that. So if you are struggling with not only putting the chords together, but then what to create after it, just use a simple static melody, okay? To give another example. I've been thinking about you all night long. Can't get you off my mind tonight. I'm playing guitar and I'm singing this song. I'm just thinking about you. Right? It's really that easy. A static melody does not have to move. And the reason I suggest that for you, because it doesn't take much effort. It is just straight, it doesn't need to move, and it's very simple to create. So marry that with the chord progressions that you have, and then go ahead and create a static melody in your verse. That's where they work best, where you're describing the story, you're telling uh, a part of the lyric that is really important for the listener to understand and use it against a set of chords like we've done here. So go ahead and use this in your writing. If you're writing on guitar, take those same four chords. You're not changing the chords that you're playing, but you are changing the, the way that they sound and what you get out the end. You're just taking the E minor and you're now barring it. It's still the same chord, but it's slightly different to the ear. 
which hopefully then will break the cycle and will get you writing different types of melodies, different types of songs, different types of strumming mm. patterns, and try picking and all of that different stuff as you start to develop and move along in your songwriting. But it is quite literally that simple. Go ahead, use it in your writing, have some fun. Let me know how you get on. If you wanna see any other type of content on this channel, then drop that below in the comments. Drop us a like and drop us a subscribe somewhere on or around this video. And I'll see you on another video sometime soon.